Hello everyone, my name is Brittany Martin and I am one of the top shelf financial analysts and today we'll be discussing the topic of cash flow after vacancy and reserves. I am currently in one of the iterations of the multifamily development template from top shelf models and we'll be using this model to, in order to demonstrate what this metric is and how you would normally see it in a financial model. So let's go ahead and get started and first talk about what is cash flow after vacancy and reserves. So cash flow after vacancy and reserves refers to the final figure that represents all the net cash flow that a property will generate after all operating expenses and capital expenditures, including vacancy and reserves are counted for, but it is before debt. It's essentially the difference between all the income properties generating and all the operating expenses and capital expenditures. So this metric is calculated by subtracting the project management fee and the capital expenditure reserves from the net operating income in this model, which you can actually see on our investor summary tab that I have open here. So if I scroll down, um, so usually your investment summary tab includes kind of some of our investment highlights, We'll have a little bit of an overview of the project, kind of a little description of what's in the project, the number of units, something maybe one of your investors would want to see. Um, but we also have our annual cash flow summary, which is very important. Um, so we have our effective gross income, ultimately our revenues, our operating expenses, gets us to our net operating income. And then we have, if there's any project management fees, or capital expenditures um, that's taken into account and that gets us to our cash flow after vacancy and reserves which is what we're talking about today so as you can see NOI and then we'll subtract out this project management fee and this capital expenditure here and that gets us to our cash flow after vacancy and reserves so NOI and cash flow after vacancy reserves are not the same thing. Um, so let's kind of keep going into further into the model and I'll kind of keep explaining kind of along the way kind of what some of these differences are and why the cash flow after vacancy reserves are important. So I'll go ahead move over to the assumptions tab. So ultimately this is kind of where we enter most of our assumptions for the project. Um, this is kind of where the main inputs are outside of our unit mix and outside of our construction budget. So we have kind of general property and timing assumptions. So this project number of units 175 that's going to be coming from our unit mix tab. Um, we'll have our exit assumptions currently assuming we're exiting in month 60. Uh, operating assumptions which is very important for this specific calculation for cash flow after vacancy and reserves since we are taking account our operating assumptions. We have waterfall structure, um, so that's a separate tab. We have a waterfall for our cash flows and then a bunch of debt assumptions. So this debt, this model includes our construction debt, our a permanent debt assumption, and then as well as a refi and a MES assumption. So lots of different capabilities in this model, as well as a cap rate sensitivities table. So we can enter what we're exiting at. So this one's 4.75% cap rate. And then we can kind of see how that has an effect on our returns. So, and so if we had a lower cap rate, we would have a little bit, we have a good amount of exit value higher and then a higher cap rate, we have a little bit lower exit value. So let's kind of keep going into the model. So we have our unit mix, construction budget, and then our monthly cash flows tab, which is ultimately the most important tab. Um, so we have our unlevered cash flows. Um, so let's kind of go out here. So we'll go out to month zero. Um, so first you'll notice there's a bunch of zeros on the tab. Don't be alarmed. This is a development project. So we will not have any revenues or really expenses kind of during the first few months due to construction. So this model currently has assumptions that we're, we're having construction for the first 12 months. 
and then we begin operating in month 13. So that's why we're not seeing kind of any revenues, expenses, and ultimately our NOI until month 13 out here. Um, this model also has a lease up schedule. So ultimately there's 175 units in this specific project that we have and we're not going to be fully leased up day one. It's going to take us some time. So occupancy kind of grows, 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 grows as our number of units available kind of dwindles down until we are fully occupied. So um, you'll see kind of our effective gross income is kind of growing, growing, growing throughout and then eventually it kind of stabilizes but then we as well have some inflation assumptions in our model so eventually that kind of also grows but it's kind of stabilized um, month over month for 12 months or so um, once we kind of get to a full occup occupancy um, here. But those are all kind of assumptions that we enter in our subjects tab, so don't worry about that. It's just kind of giving you familiar kind of with this model. Scrolling down, we have operating expenses. Um, those are more kind of fixed throughout. Besides, of course, we have inflation as well, assumptions. So um, ultimately, this is pretty s steady besides um, possibly our franchise tax and um, our management fees are all going to be based on some other factors, but for the most part, a lot of these expenses are fixed throughout. So then we take our revenues and our effective gross income here, and we add together this operating expenses, which is negative here, and that gets us to our net operating income. But we're talking about the cash flow after vacancy and reserves today. So NOI, obviously a huge part of this cash flow after vacancy and reserves, but we do need to factor in the project management fee and CapEx reserves as well into this calc. So it's very important to not include capital expenditures and project management fees into this calc um, since um, these kind of can be different all throughout different projects. Maybe some projects have zero cap capital expenditures, some have project management fees, kind of all different um, depending on how you want to operate the project. It'll be different rates. So in order to have kind of the most um, accurate and um, comparable number, um, those are not included in our net operating income number are these items. So something to always kind of remember. Um, ultimately, that's pretty important um, since we will use our net operating income usually a for 12 month or a trailing three month um, NOI calc in order to get our gross proceeds number, so our exit value. So if we were to include these extra pieces, we would likely have a lower net operating income number and it would be incorrectly calculating this number, so it's very important that um, we separate out these two line items. But at the end of the day, this number is what is going to be going down into our cash flows, but we'll be basing our exit value off of the net operating income number. Um, so again, cash flow to being seen reserves is a very important line item. Um, ultimately, you can kind of check your revenue, your operating expense assumptions and stuff, and your project management fee and CapEx. Um, so you can check kind of these, what you kind of entered for these assumptions and kind of look at this number. And since it kind of includes all these pieces and then maybe it kind of get, puts you in a direction of, am I, is, is this number make sense to you, to the project? Is it too high? Is it too low? Um, did I, underestimate how much operating expenses would be. Um, is there a reason why kind of these numbers would be that much different? Um, and then ultimately kind of gives you more realistic kind of expectation of what you would expect your cash flows to kind of be for um, the project. So a very important calc here, just kind of important, excellent, excellent baseline statistic before you kind of do any kind of deep analysis and you kind of get jumbled up into 
all the other components of the model. So that's kind of all I have for y'all today for cash flow after vacancy and reserves. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks so much.